What's up you guys and welcome to another episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. I had such an incredible time recording this episode with JCU and Kent Santosidad. Uh, we had a great conversation about sharing the gospel to the youth. Wow, kaya nga ganito yung outfit ko today. Dedicated to para sa lahat ng mga Gen Z listeners ko. But specifically for people like myself, millennials or even older generations who want to really get to know this younger generation. This younger generation who think deeply, who ask deep questions, who are so curious about the world, and who are really asking about who Jesus is, who want to know who Jesus is. If that is your calling, if that is a burden in your heart where you want to minister to young people, this episode is for you. We answer questions like, what is the role of authenticity when sharing the gospel? How do we relate to young people nowadays because of the different ways that they communicate? And how do we get to love on them, to be compassionate with them, and to walk with them so that they will get to see Jesus in their lives and in our lives as well. So enjoy this episode, you guys. Welcome to Adulting with Joyce Spring. Watch the full video of this episode on my channel, www.youtube.com slash TV. And if you want to level up your adulting game, check out joyspring.com slash collections for my digital products and course. So I'm currently reading a book called The Anxious Generation. And it's a very interesting book because it talks about uh, basically generation Gen Z. So he talks about how Gen Z pretty much grew up at the boom of technology, where social media had no rules, the internet had no rules, which eventually, the author is trying to make this argument, resulted to an anxious generation that co that's constantly on online, comparing themselves to their peers and to other people. But you both work in the field where you get to encounter the youth of today, right? You get to minister to them, you get to know them intentionally and deeply. So I wanted to ask you, how would you describe the youth of today? Ano ba yung identities nila? Ano yung aspirations nila? And what sets them apart from the generations before them? Or tayo mga millennials or even the older generations pa? Yeah, um... I think I really want to jump off of that, that they are basically digital natives. Mm. So it means that they grew up in a generation where technology was readily available for them. Unlike maybe us millennials that uh, we still had a normal telephone <laughs> that you could <laughs> ring up and still be able to live lives playing outside. My dial-up internet. My, to my dial in, uh, <laughs> um, and, but now you don't see people as much as you want playing outside as much as we did. They grew up in a generation that was really in face of a screen. But at the same time, they're very entrepreneurial. They know how to be able to make things work. Yeah. Uh, they are very intelligent. They know how to ask good questions. And um, they're very um, smart to be able to work than our age. Like We didn't care about anything. But for them, as young as a teenager, they're already involved with so much information making them ask many, many questions. I think it, is, it was Chase Dosso said that uh, uh, Gen Z occupy a world that we don't have. Um, mm. They are really, uh, as what JC said, that they're very in, uh, intelligent. And sabi nga, tawag sa kanila, iGen, di ba? And at the same time, I see that their sense of self comes from their success sa uh, career mm. or sa education. Um, iba sila sa ibang generation because other generations, medyo sa family pa natin, kinukuha yung sense of natin, self natin. But sila sa career and sa education. That's why the people I encounter, uh, the, 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 young, the youth uh, in the campus, sobrang ano sila, sobrang game silang mag uh, sali sa orgs where they will, you know, um, utilize their skills and at the same time build connections for the future. So, mm. But you know, interesting, Pastor and Kuya JC, no? it's, it's weird because I, I recently went to a university event and it was a Christian event. The ang, ang topic namin is how to foster deep and genuine friendships. So it's, it's interesting contrast na yung generation ngayon, sobrang intelligent nila. They ask good questions. But one of the things that they really struggle with is fostering deep relationships. So parang ganyan, they're very good at getting into organizations. They know how to succeed in organizations. But they told me, and these young, ch young children today, <laughs> shows the age gap. Uh, shows know? the age gap. Eh, no? But when I see 18-year-olds, because I'm 31, I'm like, you're a child to me. Like, you're very young. You have a lot of things that you'll still be experiencing. 
when I talk to them, sabi nila, it's easy for us to build connections when we have a common goal of succeeding. But it's hard for us to foster deep, intimate relationships where we really get to know each other's hearts and minds. Why do you think that's happening right now to our youth today? And ano ba yung stance nila ngayon sa faith and spirituality? Because let's be honest, it's it's really rooted a lot in faith and spirituality, di ba? Kasi ngayon, yun nga eh, ang basis for your value, and I'm not demonizing social media, there's a lot of good that can come from social media and the internet, ang basis ng value natin ngayon, a lot of it comes from social media. Our basis for morality and truth, a lot of it comes from social media. And you see a lot of our young people now kind of grappling with that push and pull, mm, diba? Yeah. I think this generation kasi values uh, social justice. Uh, they value um, uh, yung safe place, mm -hmm. yung safety nila. So I think those are the things that contribute to their lack of in-depth relationship. Why? Because medyo takot silang magpumasok sa mas malalim na relationship because that might lead to when you enter a deep relationship, medyo vulnerable ka. And that might lead to embarrassment or brokenness na ma, alam mo yun, baka mabitray sila. So they try to at least parang medyo one step backward yung sa relationship. So they're the most uh, socially connected when it comes to social media. But alam natin yung in-depth relationship, hindi sila ganun kalalim. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, yung sinabi mo rin kanina, Miss Joyce, yung, I think, um, pagdating sa faith, sa spirituality, um, they're very tolerant. They, many, according to studies, maraming mga Gen Z's ngayon, they actually say that they're atheist. But when you ask them, they're not really atheists, they're agnostics. They just don't care about God, about faith, about these things because they don't see these things relevant. And so, especially pag tayo, we want to be f friends with them. Some of them would say, oh, I don't want that because very exclusive. Kayo. Very so exclusive does that make it easier or harder to share the gospel? If you don't mind me asking from your own experience. Because it's, yeah. it's complicated. Yes, eh. yes, it's very challenging actually. Mm -hmm. You really have to spend time with them and be intentional with them and just befriend them. So that you will be able to to earn their trust. It's important sa kanila yung trust, eh, because they value safety. They also will test you if safe batong taong to, mapagkakatiwalaan batong taong to. JC, from your yeah, experience, de definitely. Uh, I think uh, the pandemic made it even worse. They were already digital natives. They were already hard to be uh, connect socially. Then the pandemic happened, making them even more isolated. So having what a good three years of their lives totally on their own not allowed to go out not allowed to build relationships i i can imagine it even worse for gen alpha having kids that doesn't mean exposed to your titas titas mm -hmm. or other friends right so here building that kind of relationship i have a really good quote that says you know we need to build relationships face to face not thumb to thumb because mm, for many of them really their relationships are thumb to thumb so they can always post um, a different version of themselves when it's not face-to-face. -face. Unlike building relationships that are connections, sharing a meal together, going out and doing activities together, you see vulnerability there. But because their friendships are built on messaging apps and other forms of uh, connections, then it's really very difficult to build that strong physical face-to-face -face relationships. One thing also I would like to add, um, this generation is looking for a community, a better community. But they don't know how to cultivate that. That's the thing. The, the fact that they're posting on social media and they're, they're, they're looking for likes or hearts, you know, it's, it's a cry for like me, value me, want me. And you can, you, you can get that from relationships, from deep, meaningful relationships. And so I think yun yung kailangan i bridge natin, yung turuan sila, paano mag cultivate ng ganong classing relationship. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share from this book that I'm reading right now. No, the author uh, he contrasts the childhood daw natin before it's play based, and now for this generation it's phone based. And he was trying to make the 
explanation that during the growth period of the brain, yung play-based is so important kasi that's how you learn how to negotiate o sino ba magsisiso now. O, pa, that's how you learn how to um, take uh, rejection o ayo ipahiram sa akin yung toy, ganyan. So a lot of us, by nature, we need that kind of face-to-face -face interaction, playing together, you know, jumping off of um, chairs and things like that and playing with other kids because that's the foundational skill development that we use to eventually build relationships in the real world. Now, the reason why this particular generation struggles with, you know, relationship building is because hindi nila nagawa yung play-based childhood na yon. Phone-based yung childhood nila. So as you mentioned, it's hard for them to really connect with others because nung mga times na dapat naglalaro sila, ang ginagawa nila nagte-text or naglalaro ng video games and it's it's really hard no you you have to have compassion for for our youth today because we we see them with a lot of intellect with a, a passion for doing the right things but they don't it's they don't know how to direct it diba um and i think one of the ways that we can really serve the Lord in this particular field is building intentional relationships with the youth of today, whether that's through ministry or even through our families or family friends na talagang nakaka-interact natin. But, you know, what I've noticed when I, when I interact with the youth or try to minister to them, they have a lot of difficult, deep questions. They're deep thinkers and they have a different way of communicating. They have a different way of relating to others. So what would be your advice or what have been the best practices that you guys have been doing to really connect and build relationships with our young people? Yeah, um, agree with that. Um, I just came from a camp and I was expecting questions to be shallow or just a few. But then the list of questions kept on coming over an hour of answering questions and difficult questions from them. But in terms of building relationships, I think it's going outside the normal form that, oh, go to church and then we'll spend time Bible studies and doing activities, youth worship, but rather going outside of it and actually doing life activities with them, enjoying meals together, going on trips together. And I think because because they're so focused on their phones, and if you invite them to actual activities, maybe go bowling together or even watch a movie and then have a meal together, they're open to those. So it's really building relationships with them and providing them opportunities to say, they're looking for somebody that is older to guide them because that's something that may be lacking for them and their families as well. So having that kuya or ate figure is something that is very valuable for the young people today. Yeah, I agree with that, Kaji. Um, also important yung availability and consistency natin with them. Alongside consistency is patience. Because we're from different generations. When I entered pastoral ministry, I thought, uh, ang lapit ko lang sa mga kabataan kasi bata pa ako. Mukha ko mas bata pa sa akin. You're the youngest among yeah. us. But mali pala ako. Ang layo rin pala because I cannot say na ito kami, ito yung gusto namin. Kasi ibang generation na talaga sila. And so, importante yung availability because there are times that you'll feel na ah, hindi ata ako kailangan to because that person is always on his phone. But actually, kailangan kanya to yung consistent na presence mo sa kanya, yung intentionality mo, and yung pag-reach out mo kahit sa social media sa kanya. No? And also important yung patience because again, iba yung likes nila, iba yung definition nila of friendship, iba yung definition nila when it comes to spiritual maturity. But you have to lovingly teach them and bring them to the Lord talaga. So that's for me. And I think that's the most... I guess, beautiful thing that we can do is really that modeling of relationship, right? Like, parang yung, well, discipleship naman talaga yung tawag natin dyan, but it's really more of caring deeply for this young person and understanding that the position that they are currently in is also quite challenging. Like, imagine growing up in a world where everyone is just like, dati pag nagkamali ka, if you have a failure or whatever, like, a few people know about it, you know. My embarrassing moments are not plastered all over social media. But now, for the young generation, parang lagi tuloy silang takot to do something or, you know, connect with someone. Kasi there's, they feel as if there's always other people watching their moves and they can't make a mistake, right? So, that kind of consistent, compassionate companionship, wow. CCC, <laughs> consistent compassionate companionship, gives them a lot of 
confidence that I can trust this person. This person doesn't just want to convert me or to make me different or to make me like them. It's it's really because they care for me. And and I think a lot of people really need that. Especially ngayon na makikita natin, na dami talagang mga difficulty that the young people are, are, are dealing with, right? But I want to ask about authenticity. What, uh, what role does authenticity play in sharing your faith with young people now? Do they want things to be a bit more sugar-coated? Gusto ba nila straightforward? Paano ba natin, paano ba tayo maging authentic in our faith and in our intention in building relationship with them while at the same time, you know, having these kind of careful and respectful conversations with them? I think it's the Barna who says na this generation is attracted when people evangelize through their works, not just by their words. Um, authenticity, kasi nakikita rin to sa actions natin. So I think very important or crucial yung, yung actions natin, yung how we live our life and how we live before the Lord because that will also affect our our uh, the gospel that we share to them so authenticity is crucial i i really believe that yes. agree completely you know actually this generation are super great at reading people they know they, they know when you're fake whether it's through a screen or through face to face they know it so the students the young people they don't expect you to be perfect but they expect you to be real and vulnerable. Share your mistakes with them. They don't expect you to be the role model that will epitomize everything. Like a perfect kuya, a perfect ate, the, the ideal father or mother that I've been longing for. They just want you to be real. And they just want you to be a person that they can say, ah, he makes mistakes, but he's still able to live with it. He, he's not going to be defensive about what he does. He's not going to try to hide it. But he's just going to be able to show me that, hey, Living this life, even following Jesus, uh, it's not all flowers and rainbows. It's going to be something challenging. And every now and then you will make a mistake. And it's okay as long as you get back up and then you live your life for him. So, yeah, they know, they know if you're faking it. Uh, or if you're making, they can smell it. <laughs> they, they know it. Yeah, I think lahat naman tayo merong um, sincerity alarms, right? Like we all know when when somebody's just trying to tell us something or do something to manipulate manipulate us to do something that they want. But I think especially with this generation, because nga they interact with all sorts of people and all sorts of material online, parang mas magaling nga sila to detect that kind of thing. I think it's also so important to kind of be compassionate with when they share their authentic self as well. Kasi minsan parang feeling ko mag-filter ka agad sila eh. If they know that you're judging them or you're not really there to build a relationship with them, nahihirapan sila to, to do that. So that kind of compassion when they're being their authentic self also and they're showing you their real self is, is so important as well. Um, but I want to ask you, because you do meet a lot of young people and you minister to a, to a lot of the youth today, what is the role of, I guess, Test testimony sharing when it comes to gospel sharing or yung stories natin, yung personal stories natin, how does that apply when we're sharing the gospel to young people? Um, very, very important siya in a way that testimony helps people see that the gospel is real. I think it's Tim Keller who said that the goal is not to make the truth clear. The goal is to make it real. And Stories and testimonies are very helpful because nakikita ng mga kabataan na ano nangyayari pala kay kuya or kay ate yung sinasabi niya at na-transform siya ng gospel na to. So, sa ngayon, for example, ako, I'm, I, I'm, I'm uh, discipling these young men and uh, these young men are hindi sila ganun makapag-express ng mga mistakes nila or because may ganun parang tingin nila na baka i-judge ako kasi pastor tong kausap ko. So what I do, I share my mistakes. I share my past, my life when I was younger and I say that ito yung mga nangyari sa buhay ko. And through that, they say, ah, baka ito talaga yung nangyari pala sa heart ko ngayon. So they're able now to to be honest with themselves, to reflect and say, ah, ito yung mga pagkakamali ko and baka blinded pala talaga ako by the, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Um, sharing your own story mm. to the young people gives them safer space that they can share theirs. Um, so saying, oh, uh, he shared not only about his week, but even his struggles, uh, whether he's having difficulty with his own parents uh, and the challenges that he's facing and then how you're dealing with that. Uh, it might be saying, oh, I'm still struggling with this and I'm still having difficulty managing my time. Um, I'm having a difficulty with my relationship with my parents. And, and they, they use it as a, oh, okay, then I can be open. Then I can be able to, to share that. And at the same time, they say, oh, it's actually possible to be able to overcome those because Kui has done it or his friend has done it. You don't only share your own personal stories, but you can even share stories of your friends, of people that you've read in the book uh, so that it can be able to be real to them that Christianity is not just another program that they're going to be doing, but it's actually changing lives and that their own personal lives can also be transformed. Yeah. And I think it's also beautiful that they get to see that hindi walang ending yung growth mo as a Christian when you're older. Like, it fascinates me when I have uh, women in my life who are my mentors and my disciplers who are in their 60s and 70s. So, sasabihan nila ako na, grabe, the Lord has been teaching me this. Mm. The Lord has been disciplining me in this era. And I'm like, hanggang ngayon? Ganon. <laughs> na meron parang, grabe, imagine mo, it never ends. That walk with the Lord and that grace that we need for a day-to-day, moment-to-moment walking with Him never ends at on this side of glory, like even when you're in your 60s or 70s, or to young people, even when you're in your 30s or 40s, alam nila na hindi hindi matatapos yung struggles. But the good thing is, you will always have people to journey with. And one of the beautiful things my husband shared to me was, sila daw na mga men, meron sila mga accountability groups on Viber. If they struggle with alcoholism, with pornography, whatever it is, my accountability group sila. Tapos they message in that group kag nakakaroon sila ng desire or parang nakakaroon sila ng inclination to do something that they know will not be pleasing to the Lord. And somebody from that group, from that trusted group, will call them and will minister to them. And I think that's just the power of personal testimony, of vulnerability, and of opening yourself up and showing people and showing young people, especially, na hey, I still struggle. God is still sanctifying me. God is still working in my life. Therefore, you can also do this. Diba? Hindi siya parang end goal na I'll be a perfect Christian when I'm 35 and I won't struggle anymore with this sin. It's 20, 30, 50 years of going back to the same sin that God is addressing in your life compassionately na nagiging better and better every single year, right? Um, but considering that today's youth are very tolerant, as you mentioned, of different worldviews, different ways of life. How can we be bold and stand in our faith while at the same time be compassionate about the different worldviews that they have? And I've had this experience where two kinds, yung isang young person that I was trying to minister to, very open, and he would ask my, <laughs> nasabi ko na pala, my brother-in-law, and I was sharing to him, and he would have these deep questions and it's it's all about faith he's very open to having that conversation but there are also types of young people that i minister to that are very how would i say it defensive kaagad or parang na, ma-offend kaagad sila kapag ginawa mo to kasi meron silang worldview na katulad ng sinabi mo kanina at ayoko niya masyado kayong exclusive eh. so how do you do that how do you stand boldly in your faith while at the same time being compassionate that this young person and maybe their friends and their peers have different ways of living and different ways of looking at the world yeah i think for me number one it gives me assurance that my responsibility to bring them to jesus is simply to tell them the truth to convert them to save them is not mine right but i love colossians chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 that says do it with wisdom and do it in grace seasoned with salt so many people when they go and present the gospel they're always defensive they're always fighting they're always like ah shove it in your face but you know what the bible doesn't do it that way the bible gives you truth but the bible does it with seasoning it with salt and grace meaning it shows you truth in an undeserving way sometimes you feel belittled people would fight you people would do so many crazy things attacking you on social media or whatnot but when you respond it should always be seasoned with salt 
pang pasarap, diba? When you put salt in your steak, it makes it the flavor come out. If you do it defensively, if you do it uh, fighting, you will never win them. But if you do it with grace, if you do it with wisdom, the Bible says with any person. So it means that there's not a one-size-fits-all response to people, but that you just really have to ask, Lord, how do I respond to this certain question, this certain people? And always do it with grace and season it with salt. It's going to be um, life-changing, really. Yeah, I think one of the things that we can learn also from Jesus was that he knew the people whom he was talking to. Um, it's very um, insightful because when Jesus talks to people, alam niya yung heart ng tao, and so he can he can speak to the person to the heart of that person. Hindi lang di ba yung parang behavioral modification. Hindi he speaks to the heart, and so I think very uh, crucial sa atin to know the people we're talking to. And why do they, um, why do they uh, tolerate these things? Ano yung background nito? Ano yung story nila behind these things? Bakit baka meron silang mga relatives who's going through this? Na kaya medyo tolerant sila. So kailangan malaman natin. And tama si kaya JC, yung sinabi niya kaya na season with salt. And I think yun din yung principle ng Bible is speak the truth in love. So may mga bagay sa mundo na absolute truth na hindi mababago. Ang isang apoy, mainit pa rin siya. 2,000 years from hanggang ngayon, mainit pa din siya. And we tell the person, wag mong hawakan yan kasi mainit yan. But throughout time, throughout the throughout history, nagbabago-bago yung how we communicate that truth. So very, tama yung sabi kaya JC kanina, important na alam natin kung paano natin siya sasabihin. Speak the truth in love. So. Yeah. And I think lead with curiosity, no? Like what you said and what what you both said actually. It's, it's, not judging why this young person has it. Like, ang, bakit mali-mali naman yung ano mo, paniniwala mo. Worldview niya, yes. The worldview yes. mo, mali-mali. Mali yan, ganyan, ganyan. It's really more of curiosity na, how did you arrive at that conclusion? You ask him the questions like, why do you look at it that way? Why do you live your life that way? Why do you look at the world that way? It's that kind of curiosity over judgment that we have to have not just with young people, but especially with young people when we're talking to them. Um, I want to ask you, because now on social media, I see a lot of young people very curious about Christianity also, right? But they have a lot of questions. What are some of the more difficult, fascinating, challenging questions that you've constantly seen young people throw at you? And what are the ways that we can address these questions? Yeah, I, I think uh, sa akin, number one, yung the problem of suffering. Mm. Um, maraming mga kabataan are asking, why does God allow suffering to happen? And you see, the, the beauty of the gospel is that we have a God who's not immune to pain. We have a God who is not apathetic towards our pain. But we have a God who suffered. We have a God who died. And I think that's... That's how we can communicate the gospel better. When we show to them that this is the God that we have. He suffered and died so that we who deserve to suffer and die will live forever with Him in heaven. And another thing siguro na medyo mabigat is yung the issue about sex, gender, and identity. Um, how do we resolve this? How are we going to respond to this? Kasi... Like almost all of us right now, all of the young people, they know someone maybe close to them who's living or pwedeng sinasabi nila na that is not their gender, kung ano yung sex nila ngayon. So how are we going to do that? Instead of, instead of telling them that these things are bad and just pointing out to them na mas mali yan, mali to, maybe we can tell a better story that this is God's design for humans and ang ganda ng design ng Panginoon. But of course, sasabihin din natin yung consequence if we, if we depart from that original design ng Panginoon. So instead of just saying, masama yan, mali yan, we can say, ito yung ginawa ng Panginoon at ang ganda ng plano ng Panginoon for humanity. And if you will just stick to that, we will enjoy the blessings of it. Beautiful. Uh, I think the questions today aren't new. They're timeless questions that have been ask over and over again questions like why does god allow pain uh if god is good why didn't he just eliminate sin altogether right 
And the beautiful thing is the Bible has all the answers. And what I suggest is that to, for them to journey with me, if they're really serious in asking those questions, is let's study the Bible together and find out. And sometimes many people are scared at answering those questions. But the truth is when even though you don't know the answers right now, you can always ask somebody else for help and say, oh, do you know a way I can answer this? Uh, and I'm sure many people uh, can be able to guide you. So ask them to journey with you. Um, I think the, the questions are the, the surface of what's really happening in their hearts. But really, for me, if they ask questions, that's a signal for, them, for me that they're interested and you could help them to go deeper and to really challenge them. You know what? The Bible does ans have answers to those questions and it invites you to ask them it's not afraid that you will find out a certain key and then it, it will explode and you will debunk Christianity. You know, the beautiful thing is ask those questions and let the Bible reveal itself to you. And then you know, just journey with me and discovering the answers to those questions. You know, that's so encouraging because I, I, I've been thinking about that as well. Na sometimes we we get surprised by these questions, but you're right. It's not new. These questions were asked during even the time of Jesus, diba? Na parang all these questions are the same at the heart of it, just framed in a different way. Mm. Nothing is new under the sun. So. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> Precisely that. But that kind of, the way that we communicate those answers is so important. And I also like what you said kanina because I, I asked that question to one of my pastors before. Paano ko I address tong issue na to with you know sex and identity that a lot of people ask about, especially with Christianity, because Christianity has been so vocal about the stand on the Bible on these things, right? And he also shared to me na, you know, we sometimes it doesn't even have to be specific to that sin or specific to that thing. Because whether you identify as your right gender or not. You're still a sinner. Like, it doesn't matter what you identify as. If you are not in Christ, you are in need of Christ. It's not that particular sin that makes you bad. It's the fact that you are born in sin, right? And the, just kind of reframing the way that we look at these questions is so powerful in itself as well. But I know that there are certain pitfalls that we might get into when we're sharing the gospel. In your experience, there are mga common pitfalls that you feel like happen to people like myself or anybody else who don't really get to interact with young people as much as you do that we can avoid when sharing the gospel? Yeah, I think... Um because this generation is very expressive and they're very um, tolerant about many things, sometimes we tend to focus on the behavior nila than the heart. Niya. So I think that's a pitfall when sharing the gospel. That's, uh, that's something that we should avoid um, to, to focus on their behavior rather than on their heart. Kailangan talaga natin makita what's driving them to think about these things and to feel the way they, they're feeling right now. So, um, as what you've said kanina, it's really Jesus whom they need. So, always go back to that. Always go back to the desires of the heart. And mangyayari lamang yun kapag you have this uh, intimate relationship with the person also. Mas makikita mo yung puso niya, mas makikita mo yung need ng heart niya. And another thing is that pag binax natin sila and because they're under Gen Z tapos eto kasi kayo ganito kayo but that person is still a person we, we, we cannot box a person and and so alisin siguro natin yung parang prejudgment or yung yung naiisip natin sa kanila agad nilabel na natin sila but or even after all, fear, no, Pastor, na parang yes. nakakatakot mag-share dyan. Kasi ano yan eh, kakansal lang ako niya right, eh, di ba? Right. Babarahin lang ako niya. Yes, like, yes. You'd be surprised. Yes. Actually, kahit itong, itong fear na to, kahit sa Gen Z, sa kapwa nilang Gen Z, may ganun din silang fear. <laughs> yes, that's true. Kaya marami ay hindi makapag-share na nilang gospel. Hmm. Sa, for example, sa campus, later, pupunta ako sa Ateneo, we have a campus ministry there. May ganun ding fear yung mga students. Like, what if they don't accept? Or what if they cancel me? So I think, um, yeah, but yun niya, yung courage at yung love for them, pag yun yung mas namayani sa heart natin. Mag yun yung mas nakita sa heart natin at na-feel natin towards them, mas madali tayo makapag-share ng gospel sa kanila. 
Yeah, definitely. I think for me, it's babying them. Mm. Uh, if you spoon feed everything and you try to try to do everything, lead Bible studies. I think this generation wants to be able to be involved. Yeah. So give them opportunities. Because when you involve them, even though they're not yet a Christian or just a baby Christian, if you allow them to be involved and just be part of that community, rather than saying, oh, you have too much of a standard for them to be involved, um, you miss out. But rather than just teaching, 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 if you allow them to be part of that community, give them small tasks and then bigger and bigger tasks, then they would see, wow, I can actually be involved with a church. I, can, I like this Jesus. The second would be um, just putting them in. I, I definitely agree with that. I, I like what Sean McDowell says. Your view of the Gen Z will affect your behavior towards them. So it's very important that when you react or you, when you relate with them, just do it out of love. And I think the most beautiful thing there is don't give up. Many people try to just, you know, throw it away. Ah, I've tried it. Ministering to Gen Z, it's impossible. Don't give up. Um, some people leave. Uh, one of the things that I do is we have a GC, and oh, just, th- just remove them, and they're not already. Uh, just keep them there. They, as long as you see, sometimes they, they still seen and all of those things, and all of a sudden they would reach out and say, am I still welcome? And then they, they come back. So don't give up. Give them opportunities and just continue being real to them, contacting them, and don't stop reaching out to Gen Z's because they will respond when they see you that you're there, you're genuine, and that they could trust you. Yeah, and if I may add, uh, very important really to pray for them. Yeah. Because after it's the Lord who will touch them and change them. And I believe na pag binago sa'yo ng Panginoon, grabe din yung ministry that they can do because this Gen Z, they really want to make a difference. Yeah. So... Actually, I, I was just about to say, sobrang nabibless kami here on the podcast because after the few times that I was canceled online, we saw a lot of young people, Gen Z, started listening to the podcast. And they started relating to even yung mga faith podcasts natin. Right, Kiara? No? Ang daming mga nagre-reply. And it's so interesting because once you remove that judgment, that prejudice of this is this is a generation that doesn't think they just cancel they're woke ganyan, ganyan. you will see a generation of young people that's just needing Jesus just needing revival just needing other older generations willing to guide them and help them through this really difficult season of growing up in this kind of world that we're in. So that kind of compassion that you guys have been talking about, that intercession through prayer, and that deep community and relationship that you guys are talking about, that's really what they need, right? So I I appreciate that and praise God for both of your lives. I have a last question that's not in our our list, but I wanted to ask you, we have a lot of young people listening here. Um, If you were to share with them even just one aspect of your own walk with Jesus that you would like for them to be encouraged by, what would that be? Yeah, I, I think for me, I grew up in church for most of my young age, attending Sunday school at a very young age, and really being protected by, you know, um, all of this world and whatnot. But I think following Jesus is really about learning day by day, learn number one, to love him, then to trust him, and then to obey him. I think for me, I live by that cycle that when you love Jesus, you will learn to trust him, and then you will learn to obey him. And when you obey him, you would love him even more because you see that his plans are really, Romans 12, 1 and 2, his plans are really good, pleasing, and perfect. For many people, they think that, you know, my plans for myself is the best. But when you learn to trust Jesus and you learn to live for him, you would see really that his plans for you is good, pleasing, and perfect. It doesn't matter what your past may be. You are uh, freed from all, um, you are free from all the hardships, or maybe you come from a very struggling world. You will still see that God's plans is good, pleasing, and perfect. Yes. I've always been an extrovert, and um, growing up, katulad ka JC, I grew up in a church. So sanay ako lagi may kasama uh, with other young people. But then the Lord put me in a place where I was, I need to be alone. So I, I, I'm in an apartment right now where I'm alone. 
And I thought na, parang mamatay ata ako ng gandong <laughs> sobrang tahimik. Just like the Gen Z, I think right now, maybe they feel disconnected to people around them. But true connection starts when we are truly connected to the one who made us and the one who saved us. When the Lord revealed himself to me, I think that's the most beautiful thing that happened to my life. Many people, even the, the young men that I'm discipling right now, they're asking, uh, Pekent, that's what they call me, Pekent, how is it possible for an extrovert to enjoy living alone, going abroad alone? I, sabi, sabi ko sa kanila, I don't know. I really can't explain what happened to me. But one thing I know, Jesus encountered me. And when I encountered him also, when I, when I knew Jesus, really, in my heart, in my life, nagkaroon ng enjoyment na hindi ko ma-explain. And that desire continues to grow. So I would encourage the Gen Z's right now to really, to really seek the Lord and find their satisfaction in Him and enjoyment in Him. Because that's the most fulfilling life that we can have to be with the Lord and to live for the Lord. I love that. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Thank you, JC, for that wonderful, wonderful sharing. Uh, so to all the young people who are watching right now, we hope that this episode showed you that there are a lot of Atis and Kuyas out here who just want to love on you, to walk with you, to journey with you, and to point you to Jesus who loves us more than most. And um, we hope that you were inspired and encouraged by this episode. If you are someone who have experiences when it comes to reaching out to the younger generation, please do let us know in our comment section at yes, he is at Joy Spring, hashtag adulting with Joy Spring. Thank you guys. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one. Paalam. That's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. If you liked this podcast, please don't forget to use the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring and also check out www.joyspring.com for the show notes and tag me on social media with you know it at Joy Spring. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam! <laughs>